All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go over my top tips for you know getting that five and you know getting the or just getting the best score possible on the AP Calculus AB exam. And I'm also gonna make a video that is gonna you know summarize or basically cram all like the topics that you should know um, right before the AP exam. So look out for that right after this video. All right, so my first tip is make sure you understand the rubric and know like how the ap exam is scored know like that's half multiple choice half your response they're both out of 54 raw points or scaled points combined 108 you have you know two sections of multiple choice two sections of free response a calculator and a non-calculator um for each um know this um multiple choice the first part is Usually 28, 30 questions, you get about an hour. The second part is about 15, 17 questions. You get about 45, 50 minutes and you're allowed to use a calculator. Fear response, six free response problems. The first two, you get a calculator for the first half an hour. And after the half an hour is up, you no longer get to use the calculator, but you can still work on all the free response problems. So make sure you understand that. Now, once you, once you know that, make sure that um, you have like a, a clear idea of what um, you need to get to get the score that you want. <laughs> that kind of didn't really, that didn't really sound right. No, know like how many problems you need to get correct or what percentage you need to get on the um, AP exam to get that three, four or five, or whatever score it is that you, that you want. Um, so let me actually show you like past Past previously, I compiled it. I compiled it on the spreadsheet, so you can see here, um, from the from the years 2012 to 2019, um, these were the one. These were the scores out of 108, and these were the percentages. I like to look at the percentages. So if you see, the percentages that earned a three each year went from you know as low as 37 to up to 42, but on average about a 40% was what got you a three. And I, again, 40%, not a 40 out of 108, 40%. So um, you can see there's not much variation, but a four over those years went from like as low as 50 to like 55 or 55, yeah, 55 was the highest. But on average, it was about 51, 52%. So four is only a little bit above 50%. And a five on average was only about 63, less than 64%. So um, seeing this, I know for my students definitely helps motivate them because then um, they're like, okay, I, I, you know, I guess I can, I, I guess I can do, I guess I can do a lot better than I thought because, you know, it, it's kind of hard um, at first to switch from, you know, being used to getting, you know, uh, 90%, 80%, 70% on your exams, you know, and, uh, you know, to pass the course and, you know, when you, based on the regular grading scale, but, you know, these are tough exams. So that's why these uh, percentages are, are the way they are. So I like to usually advise my students to, um, when they're practicing and, you know, assessing themselves, um, if you're getting at least 50% of the problems, right, that's, that's, that's a, that's a very good sign because you're pretty much, gonna pass the exam for sure, if not get a four. So aim for that 50% um, because it's, it's just an easy number to keep in your head. So um, have a clear goal that always makes it easier for you to know what you gotta do to achieve your goal. You don't want it to be some like abstract, you know, number, oh, do the best you can. Like you wanna have a clear percentage that you wanna aim just like you would in sports or, you know, any, uh, any other goals that you typically have. Um, now, my next tip would be right at the beginning of your exam when you get it and you know you're allowed to you know start and open it. Um, take a few minutes to skim through the problems. Um, so you're first gonna get the multiple choice section. So you know flip through it and take a look at the first 30 problems. Um, don't spend too much time, but don't spend don't spend like 30 seconds either. I say maybe spend about two three minutes to just skim and like read like slow like kind of read over the problems um that you're going to be uh, you're going to have because um it's actually going to help prime your brain with the right concepts and get it like warmed up um 
you know, for the problems that you're going to be doing. It's, um, it's sort of just like warming up for a workout, like, or like if I was, if I was like to tell you like to, to, um, to find every word that you know, like just by just from the off top of your head, you'd be like, this is, this is ridiculous. You wouldn't like, there's, you probably know a hundred thousand words. I mean, I like, but you probably can't, I couldn't even probably, it would take me forever just to come up with, you know, 1% or 2% of all the words I know. But if you had a worksheet and I printed out a thousand words and I told you to explain each of those words, you could do it. It's like, it's, it's already there for you. It's, and, and, and you don't, it's not like something, it's not, it's not going to be an extra effort for you having to pull it out. It's just you, um, rec you, you really, you just have to recognize it. So that's what the same idea is when you're, when you're dealing with these math exams. Like if you see the word or the term intermediate value theorem in problem 20, mean value theorem in problem 25, or L'Hopital's rule, or second derivative, or concavity, those thoughts start popping in your head and you start remembering, oh yeah, that's, that's when it's a maximum, that's when it's a minimum, that's when you have an industry, those things are already you prime your brain and it actually makes the, the exam go a lot smoother right from the get-go. So really take those few minutes to just um, glance through the problems um, and get yourself primed and warmed up. And building off of that, what I've typically found when I've taken like, I've taken like 10 or 20 of these exams on my own, what's nice about them is that the problems tend to increase in difficulty as the, as the problems go up. So problem one, tends to be, I guess, be the easiest and problem 30 tends to be the hardest and it just goes in increasing order. Now, um, that doesn't mean necessarily for you, that's how you want to do it. So my next tip is basically to focus on doing the right multiple choice problems um, for you correctly. That was, that was a weird way of, that was a weird way of explaining that. So let me, so I, 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 if I was to kind of break down what type of multiple choice problems you have on your exam, I would say there's three types. I would say there's like a direct calculation. Um, then there's like a, there's like a true false if, like kind of a conceptual, like a con more of a conceptual type multiple choice. And then there's a picture multiple choice where you gotta like, like match, you know, second derivative graph, which would with, with those ones. So, do the, the, cal the calculations first. You know, the ones where they find the derivative of cosine, integrate from one to five of X cubed, um, find the equation of the tangent line. Do those ones first, because they're not really gonna take much thinking. They're just gonna be um, like subconscious, you know, you know, calculations, which should be easy. Um, and the nice thing is, is that the answers for these questions are not like, they're not they're not designed to like to get you to get you to have a wrong answer based on like a miscalculation due to like um arithmetic or something each each multiple choice answer is cleverly designed for you to to to, to assess if you're going to try the problem by integrating or by differentiating or by you know solving for you know the zero because they want to see if you understand the calculus concept. They don't want to see if you understand how to multiply or divide or add you know two numbers together. So then you're not going to get answers that are like 1.5 and 2.5. Like you're not going to get answers close to each other. You're going to answers that are usually distinctly different based on their value because one answer you get from differentiating, one answer you get from integrating, that sort of thing. So don't worry again too much about tedious errors if you mess up you do a calculation and you get a you get an answer that doesn't match anything then if you're sure if you're sure that you were doing the right process then just pick one closest but if you're not sure then that's a sign that okay maybe i gotta do something else don't just pick the closest answer if you're not confident but i advise do the calculation problems first next i would advise to do the um the ones that uh are like an like kind of conceptual meaning that like um like they usually have the word could like could like like which of the following could be um correct um which of the following statements could be correct according to the to according to this function um meaning they have some reading in it like if you have to start reading 
I would honestly just wait and not even start those until after because if you start those, you're going to want to finish them. You're not going to want to waste one or two or three minutes on those problems and be staring at your watch. And go, oh, let me let me do a different one because because you're going to waste time going back to it later. If you're going to start those, you got to finish those. So I usually would advise don't even start the ones that you know are going to take more than a few minutes. Even if you know how to do them, do the easiest ones first, which are ones that are usually direct calculations. You don't have to really read or do anything. Um, then do those ones, the ones where you got to, you know, maybe match and think and read a sentence. The last ones I would do are the ones that are have like a picture and match the second derivative with the first derivative. There's always those types um, of problems. Because the thing is, those for me, those can drive, sometimes they drive me crazy because sometimes I, I just like kind of get, uh, they can mess with your head, meaning that you may, you understand the concept, but they don't really have numbers. You can't tell, is that supposed to be curved or flat? Kind of like, and, and if you're spending three, four, five, six minutes on that problem, it makes you nervous. You don't want to keep on spending that time, but you already are thinking about it. So save those for last because, um, um, again, each multiple choice problem is worth the same and you don't lose points for guessing. Um, which, brings me next, which brings me to my next point. As you're doing this entire exam, as you're going through every problem, make sure that you're really focusing on getting the problem correct. Don't worry too much about the time. Um, meaning that don't feel like, oh man, like I, uh, I'm, I'm, I, can I can only spend two minutes on each multiple choice problem. And I already spent, you know, three minutes on this one. I got to just circle an answer and move on. It's not, that's not the correct mindset you want to have. It doesn't matter if you, if you get through the entire multiple choice section, if they're all wrong, like, it, like it, yeah, you can, you can get through every single problem. Like I can get through the entire multiple choice section in five minutes if it was okay for me to get them all wrong. It doesn't matter. So it's not about you getting through each problem. It's about you doing each problem correct. So even if you can only get through, let's say, 20 of them, 20 out of the 30, but if you get 20 of those 30 correct, that's 66, 67%. That's already beyond a five. Even if you didn't, even if you don't guess on the final 21 through 30, even even if you again you leave those 10 blank, you're still gonna get a five because again this test is based on accuracy, um, and it's tough to even get through all these problems in that hour. Like it's it's tough even for me even if even for me doing math for you know 100 or so years it's still a challenge for me to get through all of it all these problems in that time so don't focus on getting through each problem two minutes or so focus on doing whatever you doing each problem correctly that's what's going to get you on the good score and um make sure you at least guess at the end um have the mindset it's better to be in the way i like to um, tell my students is i Again, this could be subjective, but I would say it's better to be an expert at five things than to know 10 things and be like so-so. It's better to do five things at level 10 than 10 things at level five. So have that mindset as you go through it. Um, now my next tip building off of that and um, talking now about the free response is um, you're really going to have a... Uh, the, the free response section cycles through eight types of problems is, is what I've noticed. And um, I'm going to kind of go into that in my next video when I go through my cram session of everything you got to know. But um, your free response problems are really going to deal with, there could be one on differential equations, another one with a crazy integral, meaning that you're going to have an integral with like a half circle, triangle. You're going to have a, like a tedious, not tedious calculation per se, but making sure you know what the integral is is it below the curve, above the curve, um, that sort of thing. So I, call, I just call it a crazy integral picture. You're gonna have a kinematics, a kinematics physics, acceleration, that sort of thing. Um, the fourth one, a volume of a solid or revolution, you know, the R squared minus, minus the little R squared. That'll be the fourth one. The fifth one, you'll have a trapezoidal rule in a context of a problem. Um, the sixth one, you'll have like something on continuity with like a tangent line, making sure the limits from the left and right connect. And then a, a, the seventh one I usually will see here and there is something dealing with the mean value theorem, kind of like hidden though. It's not really explicit, like mean value theorem or intermediate value theorem, sometimes squeeze theorem, like a theorem. And then the other one 
will usually be based on like concavity, second derivative, first derivative, like an off, like um, a uh, volume of a cylinder has the rate of water fills in. Um, those eight will usually be cycling through. So you expect to get six of those eight topics on your free response problems. And again, I'm gonna go into this in more detail in my next video. So um, I'll break it down and explain exactly how those problems will work to help you out. Now, in, in addition, my, my other tip for the free response problems is just make sure you're um, careful with your decimals. They always want you to, they say go to the three decimal spots. So always write your answers with three to the third decimal spot. You don't have to write it any, any further than that, but write it to the third decimal spot or leave it the way it is if, you, if it's a non-calculator. Mean, mean, leave it in terms of pi if the answer has a pi in it or root a root two or something like that. Don't try to simplify or combine um, if you're not, if you're afraid you're gonna make a mistake or if you just don't have time. Because again, it's not a, it's not a test of arithmetic, it's a test of calculus. Also be careful about your units. Make sure you're um, always paying attention to your units. Like, I mean, I wouldn't even be this strict, but I, I looked at past grading rubrics where a student loses the entire point or two on, an, on their answer just because they didn't put feet or feet squared or, or, or feet per feet or second per second, that sort of thing. So really pay attention to that. They're, some of, some of these graders, I think, take great pride in docking points off for that. I mean, um, we got to keep in mind that these are, these are people that are going to be grading for hours on end. And um, they may be in a bad mood, good mood. You never know. Like, at the end of the day, yes, they have a rubric they got to follow. But, I you mean, know, I've been a teacher. I understand, like, what it's like. When, you, when you're going through hours of an exam, you kind of like huh, another, you, if you get like four or five bad exams in a row, you're kind of like, oh man, I just want a good exam. You, you got, you're just hoping for the next exam to go good. And you actually will kind of be a little lean, a little lean. You're like, okay, this one did a lot better. But then the opposite, sometimes when you get a lot of perfect exams, you're grading more strictly. So I have to, I have to kind of hold back. I have to kind of rethink to make sure I'm, I'm not doing that. But like what pops in my head is like, like I, I kind of, I kind of want to adjust my grading just based on how students are doing. So um, that's something that you got to think about because I know a lot of you aren't, you know, teachers or graders. But again, these people are doing this sort of grading for hours straight, and they only get paid like twenty bucks an hour. Is it? I mean, I don't, I don't, I've done it once, but I'm not really ever going to do it um, for the money or for, or I don't even enjoy. I personally don't enjoy it that much, but some, again, these teachers do enjoy it. And build, furthermore, just make sure you write clear work, make sure you write organized. Um, and if you don't know an answer, don't BS it. Just, just leave it blank or, um, you know, leave it and live, write down what you know. Don't write down stuff you don't know. Don't write down messy. It's going to make them a lot, they can make your graders a lot more, you know, uh, friendly towards, towards, towards how they're going to grade you. Um, so, so those are my top tips. Um, I, uh, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a video I'm gonna make a video on on all the topics crammed together. Um, so look out for that. So it'll help you totally get ready for the, your AP exam. So let me know if you have any questions, any feedback is appreciated, and please subscribe. That definitely that's gonna help me feel better about making these videos. And any let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover. All right. So I hope that helps and good luck.